thanks for bearing with us in attending today's live presentation all about how to heat print headwear. Uh, throughout the presentation, we're going to go over some different styles of hats that are available out there in the market to print. We're going to showcase the Max Cap Press, which is one of the cap presses available from stalls. And we're actually going to walk through some different transfer types and styles that are available for printing. Uh, without further ado, let's just start over at the cap press, if we can zoom in um, over here. I'm going to be working with a uh, six panel cap uh, to start. And, and so when you're considering sourcing caps, there's basically two styles of caps that are out there and available. There is a six panel cap, which if you literally count the panels on the cap, sort of in between the seams, you'll come up with the number six. And then there's also five panel caps, which basically the difference is these uh, caps don't have a seam directly down over the center on a five panel cap. Now for screen printers and, and often embroiderers, you like to go towards uh, screen printers, especially a five panel cap because it's easier to drag the squeegee across uh, to print it without the obstruction of a seam. But for heat printers, we really don't care. We can heat press directly over that seam of a cap. And that's one of the benefits of leveraging screen printed transfers um, as well, because we get that screen printing look and we can get it on a six panel cap. So I'm gonna start by loading this unstructured cap. Basically, this means that the cap um, is sort of a soft backing where the crown of the cap is, the very front of the cap. I'm going to start by loading that into place on the cap press. Now just to cover some of the basics with loading a cap that I've completed here. Number one is we always want to flip the sweat band of the cap out. Having the sweat band of the cap out is going to prevent any pressure issues down at the lower side of the cap where I want to print. Next, you'll notice I sort of um, scoop the cap onto the whole platen assembly and then lock in this red uh, hold down device. That's my cap hold down device. What that does, it helps hold the cap flat against the heat printing surface. Um, every cap press, it needs a special press to print the front of the caps because it has a curved heater and a curved bottom. Those are designed so that when you lock it down, they meet down perfectly together. Now when we talk specifically about the Max Cap, if we can pan up to the digital control display, um, you'll see that there are basically uh, three settings here. You can hit the mode button using the plus and minus key. Um, you can adjust your temperature. You can hit the mode button again and adjust your timer. So just like your normal heat press, this delivers digital time and temperature. To adjust the pressure, there's actually a pressure adjustment knob if we can go back to the main view, it's kind of tough to see because it's actually underneath the cap assembly where I can raise and lower this up and down to dial in the pressure. So I need a little bit more pressure because I'm pressing a screen printed transfer and I'm feeling the pressure based on locking um, that particular device down. When I lock it down, you know, I feel a medium to a firm pressure, which is what I'm after. Now, if you take a step up in cap presses and go with a Hotronics auto open cap, not only do you get the auto open feature of the press, but you get a digital pressure display. So you're not guessing the pressure, you know exactly what you're at. There's a lot of transfers that can apply down to headwear. In this case, I'm using a screen printed transfer from Transfer Express, and I'm actually going to apply this to a front of a hooded sweatshirt to go with this design, which is for a masonry company. And so this has been screen printed onto a carrier sheet with a powdered adhesive on it. It's a two color transfer. I'm going to flip that over and position it directly down over top of the seam of my cap. Now, if you want to keep some thermal tape nearby, it'll help to tape that transfer into position on the side to make sure it doesn't want to move uh, when you're working with it. Um, I don't have any thermal tape nearby, so I'm just going to lock it down slightly, make sure it engages. I'm heat pressing a goof proof heat transfer, which can be applied at 340 degrees uh, for 10 seconds. It also can apply at 365 degrees for three to five seconds. I'm always erring on the side of lower temperature when I'm heat printing headwear because uh, basically caps can be heat sensitive. Now I'm dealing with just sort of a cotton cap right now, an unstructured cap, which is they're popular right now. They're extremely easy to print, but go towards your lower setting of any heat transfer that you're going to be printing. So let's slide this over to where we can get a closer view of the cap over at our uh, fusion heat press. We have a shot set up here 
so you can actually uh, see the cap and uh, you're seeing the screen printed transfer um, applied to the cap directly over the seam. Uh, really nice print area. And so one of the benefits to learning how to heat print headwear is now I can start to package uh, items for sale. I can add uh, a hat to a hoodie sale or to a t-shirt sale, you know, and then when you start to print bags and different types of items, with these heat printing tools, a lot is possible. This feels great, a nice screen printed result. Now let me show you how I arrived at this transfer. This transfer was actually screen printed onto a gang sheet. So in this case, I have multiple designs. I have three cap prints, or could be a left chest, a sleeve print, can apply to a variety of items that I've nested or ganged up to the same transfer sheet where I've ordered two full front prints. So this is a great way when you're decorating for a client to group your job because you're going to pay the same price for the sheet regardless of whether it holds one logo or in this case five logos. And so just leveraging that job um, when you're going to order the transfer and presenting it in that way. Now just to finish off this job and show you how a screen printed transfer works, I'm going to swap out this attachment on the heat press from the 16 by 20 because I want to print a hooded sweatshirt operating here on the Hotronics Fusion heat press and I'm going to load the 11 by 15 lock that into place. Now I'll be able to split my hooded sweatshirt, loading it onto the platen. You see how the pocket falls right down over the edge then, and I get a nice, fresh, flat printing area. Let's preheat just so I can make sure my pressure is appropriately adjusted, and it is. It's reading on, as a six on the digital display. Place my transfer into place, and heat print. In this case, the same 340 degrees for 10 seconds. Now while that's printing, I'm going to work my cap press temperature back down across the room, down to 300 degrees. Come back, open the press, peel away the backing of the transfer sheet, and now I have a nice combination. I have the hat printed with the hoodie. Um, a great result. This would be a great package to sell uh, to a company. So you start to get the benefit of why printing hats could be beneficial to you. Now when you talk about heat printing hats versus heat printing uh, versus embroidering hats, one of the benefits of having a heat press or a cap press for your hats is just speed and throughput. So embroidery is still one of the preferred methods for decorating a cap. But we know sometimes it's a little difficult to hoop a cap. Sometimes it takes a little more time to process. With a heat press, I'm printing these in about a minute per hat, 10 seconds of actual application time. So it's very um, quick in what you can deliver. It's very easy to execute. And as you'll see throughout this presentation, there's a wider variety of effects that you can do to accommodate hats. So I'm going to stop now to catch my breath since we had some technical difficulties and I'm going to uh, read some questions that are coming in on Facebook and try to provide some answers here. So can we see a close up of the transfer over the seam? Yeah, Jimmy, so if you want to switch back to the uh, GoPro cam, I'll try to hold the hat in there. Um, not quite a live view, so you're going to have to give me feedback, Jimmy, I'm not seeing it up here. Does that look like a close up to you? Okay, it should come up. All right, yeah, so you can see sort of the close up there. Hopefully I'm getting that in frame, but it's directly over top of that seam and you're not seeing really um, any imperfection. I mean, you see the seam slightly through the print, but a really nice um, high quality print. Um, the next welcome watching us all the way from Africa, so thanks for that. And then the question from Tony is, I wonder what the subleflock looks like on caps. Um, I think flock is a great product. Uh, for printing headwear. The thing I really like about it, it gives you that raised dimension um, which sort of rivals embroidery. Um, and so the point is, even if you embroider hats, heat printing can be a viable technology because a little quicker you may be able to offer a lower price point and print more items, more hats per hour than you could with embroidery equipment. So let's keep moving. Now let's go, that was an unstructured cap, a screen printed transfer. I'd like to stick with an unstructured cap and show you how to heat apply um, a heat transfer film. There's more than one way uh, to create a transfer. In this case, we've cut 
on a vinyl cutter from Glitter Flake Heat Transfer Film. In a mirror image, we've weeded away the excess and then that prepares it for application. So this is a great option if you don't have, you know, 30, 50 hats to do. If I wanted to do a single personalized piece or 12 pieces or a low quantity, heat transfer film, heat transfer vinyl is a great way to do that. Uh, welcome watching us all the way from India on Facebook as well. That's exciting. Okay, so we're going to load this hat onto the press. This is a youth cap that's uh, been sold from Wholesale Boutique. I'm actually printing this hat with my daughter's initials. Take it home as a little bonus gift for her. Now this hat isn't loading, isn't staying uh, very flat. This is one of the most common challenges when you're heat printing hats. When you load that hat on and pull it, you basically want a complete flat surface between the lower pad and the print area. If I try to print this like this, it's going to crease, I'm going to have a ruined hat. Okay, It's not going to be ideal. And so when you're buying a hat press, and if you buy any Stalls hat press, which I'll be offering a special to you all watching live at the end of today's presentation, it will have an interchangeable attachment. Basically the ability to quickly pull that attachment out, just like we do on our Hotronics Fusion Press, our flat press, be able to pull that out and drop in something that's a little more appropriate uh, from a size standpoint. One of my favorite attachments is this two and three quarter by six and a half attachment. It's called our low profile or all-star platen. And so one of the best things about this one, it's extremely uh, low profile, I guess, from what, what it'll print. And so it accommodates a lot of these hats that are trending. So something like this, that's a youth hat, I'm going to be able to drop that on. I'm going to step to the other side of the machine so I can see a little better. Flip out the sweatband. Now I'll lock in my hold down device and sort of pull it and I get an extremely flat print area. Now I'm able to, to place my transfer and apply. Glitter Flake applies at 300 to 330 degrees for 10 to 15 seconds. Position my design directly over the seam. A lot of times if you have your pressure dialed in, I skip the preheat on hats because they're not going to be laundered typically. I'll just load it on and press so it pulls a couple seconds out of the job. So press this down for 10 seconds. Somebody made the comment about doing a lot more than hats on the hat press. Uh, we call it a cat press for a reason, C-A-P. Stands for can apply practically anything. So you can apply uh, neck labels, uh, short sleeve prints, um, all sorts of applications. Most heat transfers go directly over the seam without issue, as we're seeing here. And I'll give you a close up of that in a moment. But one of the big benefits of heat printing hats is the ability to not only print practically anything, uh, but print any location. So the idea that I can rotate this hat, I can hit a side placement, I can move the hat to the back, and I can hit a back placement. It's very quick, very easy to be able to print multiple locations. Now if I wanted to put a name drop across the, ba the back, I'm going to tack down the heat press just to get it flat, because it was uh, wrinkled up a bit there. I'm going to, I've created a name drop to go across the back and I'm just going to press it. So very quick, very easy to hit additional placements. Now if you want to get even crazier than just the main sort of uh, crown area of the hat, you can do that as well. You can heat press the bill of the hat. Typically when you're looking at a hat bill, you have two basic types of bills. You have a curved bill like what I'm working with here, and there's the finished print. I'll bring it into a close-up here in a second. And then you have flat bill caps. Now, I wouldn't recommend pressing a flat bill cap on this press. While it would work, it's going to damage the flat bill, the result that your customer wants. And so we have a special tool for that. I'll show you in a moment. But if it's a curved bill, not really a big deal. Just to rest the bill up against the heat press, sort of support the hat with my opposite hand, and be able to lock that down you'll be able to print directly over the seams on this bill, which we'll do a, later, a little bit later on another design. But for now, let's take the um, Fusion Press and give you a close-up of that result. So you can see we have our front print directly over the seam. Rotate that around, and I have my name drop uh, directly on the back. And so a uh, great little style I've had here for uh, youth, for a kid. Um, and Glitter Flake pairs well in these trending colors. So lots of different options. While we're over at this press, um, let me show you a little bit about the flat bill printing. So I'm going to remove a couple 
items from the press. I'm going to swap out this attachment. Pull it out of place and I'm going to drop in my hat bill attachment. This particular attachment allows you to load multiple flat bill hats in for printing at once. So you sort of see it. It's also really good for short sleeves. But the intent here is that I can take a flat bill hat, I can load it in upside down, even if I want to load a couple at a time here, I can do up to four, and be able to position my design. A lot of different materials will print on the back side of the bill of the hat. I'm going to utilize fashion film, which is one of our most popular heat transfer films. We have templates that have already been set up for you in a software called CADWORKS Live that have this sort of curve to them that will allow the printing of the bill. I'm applying fashion film on this one, and this one I'm doing fashion film electric. Now, um, I should have checked my pressure first, but I'm going to do it because I know these materials are sort of forgiving in that way. These materials apply at 320 degrees for 10 to 15 seconds. Pressure's good. You want to have a little bit more than your normal pressure on a flat bill to make sure it's going to get through any sort of ridges on the edge of the bill. Open it when it's finished. And you should be able to pull the carrier from the design. Now, I didn't get um, a good pressure here, and so when I was um, locking it down and doing that test, I sort of wrinkled the edge, so I'll just point that out. I know it's tough to see on the video, but I want to come clean on that. But if you catch any particular mistakes before you press, oftentimes you can just cover it with a cover sheet and give it another application, and sometimes it'll sort of flatten out um, those areas or those mistakes so you have a presentable product for a customer. So we can see it did a pretty nice job um, sort of hiding that area of that hat. So we have the completed result um, and printing the underbill. Something else that's really neat um, about this particular platen is that if you wanted to print the top of the bill, now you'd want to be careful handling these structured caps, but you can flip them inside out and get to a print area. Of course, you need to remove the sticker and actually do a placement on the front of the bill. So a lot of cool um, application techniques. Now I have talked to decorators that just want to put a little print on a flat bill hat and not buy the platen. You can use your flat platen on your press. You just sort of have to insert the hat into the side to be able to hit those sort of print areas. So that would be the way to do sort of at least the flat bill on the regular press uh, to help answer that question. Now heading back over to the um, Max Cap Press. One of the questions that came in from Justin is what's the advantage of the auto open press over the max cap press? And really there are three big differences when it comes to the um, max cap press versus the auto open. So number one is in the name. The auto open press is going to automatically open, whereas this one is just going to beep when it reaches the conclusion and you're going to have to manually open it. It does have a smooth shock opening though. Next. The auto open press has a digital pressure. This does not. So on the max cap press, you're going to have to say that feels like a light, a medium, or a heavy versus that's a one through nine scale on a digital pressure readout. And then last but not least is the warranty period. The auto open uh, Hotronic series of presses always carry a five year warranty. The max cap press is going to carry a one year warranty. So price difference wise, you're at 855 for the auto open versus 700 for the max cap press. So $155 difference for those three features. As far as, you know, the laser cut steel framework, the cap hold down device, the interchangeable platens, time, temperature, the heater used, all of those things are the same. Um, and so I find myself, if you just want to get into printing hats, um, I think the max cap press does a really nice job, but if you want that extended warranty pressure and auto open, make the jump for 155 more dollars. So as you saw here, um, and we'll get ready to print another hat, is that one important accessory when you're buying either hat press, you definitely want to budget money for the interchangeable attachments. That's going to be key. 
So it comes with a standard attachment, which is about um, three by five and a half. The two and three quarter by six and a half is going to be key. The largest print area you can get in case you were doing sleeves or something like that would be the four by eight attachment, which is always really um, good for the sort of the high crown uh, foam trucker caps with the mesh back. So, so far we've applied um, some sort of unstructured caps. Let me do sort of one more in that vein before I move on. This is a camper style cap. So it's sort of like, I guess you could call it a five panel. It has a really flat printing area across the um, front of it. I'm going to uh, load that in the same way. I still have that two and three quarter by six and a half platen loaded. Lock down the hold down device. I'm going to start by preheating. For those of you that are watching live, if you do want to take advantage of a special we're offering the live viewers only on a hat press, I can set you up with either one of those hat presses. I can throw in the low profile attachment, which is a $60 value, and get you free shipping. Just go ahead and type in in the comment field when you're interested, and we will, uh, or message us, and we can get you set up. I preheated that area just to check my pressure. And I've cut out, again, out of heat transfer film. This is the fashion film product line. And I'm going to position that into place. Notice in my artwork, I've sort of created an envelope or an arch on the top of the text to match the style of the hat. Very easy. Position and press. Um, doesn't get much easier than that as far as speed and throughput. Complete the application, peel away the carrier, and I should be able to flip this up here to give you a good look. Jimmy, you'll just have to give me the thumbs up that we have a good look at that. Um, now, let's go to the difference between an unstructured cap, which basically means it's soft. These are the easiest to print, so when you're sourcing hats on like um, Auto, which is O-T-T-O, um, caps.com or autohats.com, um, they'll have a whole category of unstructured hats. Those are going to be the easiest for you to start heat printing uh, and most flexible. I'd recommend you start there. But then undoubtedly, you're going to get into wanting to print some structured caps. Um, this backside of the cap is hard. Typically, you'll see that on these baseball style caps. That's called a fused buckram. So on a fused buckram, you have this sort of fused material that gives the cap structure. Um, doesn't let it sort of sit softly against the head, but stays raised on the crown area. These are noticeably more challenging to print uh, with heat and with pressure. What happens is, is um, the heat press wants to leave sort of a crease mark across the top crown of the hat after you press it down with heat and pressure. So you really have to be careful on these hats. I would say the two toughest things to accommodate with hats is a structured cap, like we're seeing here, and then also a hat that's manufactured with acrylic content in it because that's heat sensitive as well. So a couple of very important things when you want to heat press this style of hats. Number one is you want to make sure you have the right attachment. And so in this case, the low profile attachment works well even though it seems like a higher crown. The low profile actually sits below that structured area of the cap to give you that flat print surface for loading. And then also, if possible, you want to use a lower temp heat transfer material. I'm dropping my temperature down to 280 degrees because I'm going to use a product from our Stahl's Tech family of materials. This is a digital transfer logo. Um, you can buy it, it's called a CAD print, or if you have a solvent printer cutter, you can print and cut this yourself uh, to prepare it to apply. So I'm going to position it into place and hopefully my press will start to um, work its way down here on temperature. It has sort of a sticky backing after you order it. It's a nice digital transfer, holds into place. For those of you just joining in, I see the question there from Dolores. The special on this press is $700. You get a free uh, low profile attachment with it and free shipping. Uh, the auto open press, uh, same deal, uh, $855, but you get the free platinum and free shipping. Just type that you're interested and we'll reach out. Uh, I'm not going to give this sort of the full time to cool down because we'll be here waiting. Uh, but I'm going to tack this down with a cover sheet to sort of protect the material for initial uh, five to six seconds. This is 
a, a warm peel on the transfer. So after it's been applied, I'm just going to uh, peel back the uh, transfer material. Um, another thing that I want to show that happened there, it's kind of tough to see, but this was sitting pretty far down towards the edge where my sweat man was. And if I feel up under here, that actually did not receive any pressure. So it's very important that I have that cap seated all the way up on the attachment. I caught it while I was applying it. So luckily I'll be able to sort of pull it up a little bit higher, lock it down into place and make sure that bottom area of my transfer is actually receiving pressure. So if that ever happens to you, just stop, slide your cap up. I'll even sort of give it an extra boost here from the back side of the bill and make sure it's going to receive pressure. Now let's try that warm peel. Peel the carrier off and then this is a two-step application because it's a low temp. So after I peel the carrier off, you can see the transfer is uh, completely on there, but it's important to hit it with a cover sheet. Now, you can kind of break the rules when you're printing headwear, meaning you can apply stuff at lower temperatures and lower time settings than typically is required. And the reason you can do that is because a hat is not going to be laundered, so it kind of allows you to break the rules. So if you ever have an issue where a hat's heat sensitive or won't apply, you can sort of drop those settings. And let's move over to the close-up cam here so I can show you this over by the Fusion. And you can see this would be printing a structured cap. Once again, digital transfer. I'm going to try to move it a little closer. Jimmy, am I into frame there? down there like there okay and you can see directly over top of the uh, seam the full color design uh, this is printed out of our CAD prints and in foil tech metallic so you get a metallic silver base so you get something really cool on the hat that blends right in you see no crease marks on this hat now I have done myself some favors here I've sourced a hat that's manufactured from like a cotton twill um, which is a typical choice in headwear versus the acrylic hat. On acrylic hats, especially on darker colors, you're going to have um, a scorch mark that wants to appear unless you're able to drop your temperature really low. So anytime you can source sort of cotton twill as the material like a brush twill hat versus an acrylic hat, you stand a chance at much better results from a quality standpoint. So. Um, but we know that some people want the acrylic hat, so I don't want to leave that out of the equation here. And I'm going to heat press uh, one of these auto snapback caps um, over the heat press that's acrylic. And what I would recommend doing is if you want to heat print um, acrylic hats, if you can lead your customers to a lighter color cap, so a white, um, an ash gray, um, a light sort of Carolina blue, like anything that's lighter, it's a lot less likely to so show scorch marks than a black hat. Black acrylic is the absolute worst to try to heat print. So I just don't want to see you run into challenges. So try to move towards unstructured. If you go to towards a structured hat, move towards more of a uh, brush uh, twill hat instead of acrylic. If you have to do acrylic because somebody wants something that looks like the 5950 new era, then go towards a lighter color if at all possible. So just tricks to help you. Let's load this on and do a print area. I want to show you sort of a different placement on this. Rotate the cap a little bit on its side, lock in the hold down device, making sure my print area is flat. I'm going to do sort of a drop down in the lower corner here. Going to use that same Stahls Tech material that presses at a low temp. Position that down. Cover it with a cover sheet. Let's start with a five second um, application to get it into place. Um, and just so you know, all of these, all the hat presses sold by Stalls does have the interchangeable attachments, so no need to worry there. You're really just picking between whether you want the auto open with digital pressure and a five-year warranty for $150 more than the manual machine with uh, manual pressure, manual open, one-year warranty. Tapping it down for five to six seconds and then locking it down for a full application. and we have a completed hat. You can see, really nice, um, high quality result. So feel free to print all over the hat. I do want to show you 
one thing to watch out for that I've found through experience in printing these flat bill hats. Sometimes when you try to get to the side placement of the hat, that bill is just too big um, to go sideways on the hat. Uh, it's almost like, you know, in our heat press manufacturing, which we'll look at if we could sort of notch out this bottom, it would fit a little bit better. So you don't want to get too close to sort of a side placement on an extremely large flat bill hat. You want to print the front and you want to be able to uh, print the back. But printing these locations really is no problem with the heat transfer film. Just position the hat into place, make sure your material is on there as straight as you would like it, and lock the press down for the recommended application. In this case, we're doing fashion film on the back of this hat, which takes 10 seconds. I had it at six, that's why you're hearing the extra beeping. Peel the backing off, and we have a completed design. So um, no real issues uh, customizing this. We have a nice new hat for Jimmy to wear to the trade shows. Stalls design. All right, let's stop and take a couple more questions before I print, uh, I think, three more hats uh, before we conclude today. Um, can you scroll down a little bit on the Facebook feed so I can read to see if there's anything below? Questions? All right, a lot of people interested. Um, is there a way to do hats on a regular press? I think we addressed that one earlier. All right, so I think we're pretty caught up on questions. If you have more questions coming in, please type those in. Uh, we're just going to continue to show you more tips and tricks about um, heat printing hats. So, so far, uh, just to recap for those joining us late, we've printed a screen printed transfer on an unstructured cap. Earlier we printed a hoodie to match it. We printed a glitter flake transfer on a youth cap. We've heat applied um, now onto a structured cap in a lot of different placements to show you that. And we've also printed uh, a digital transfer and also an underbill print. Um, on structured caps. So a lot of different things you can do and as somebody mentioned earlier this isn't just for printing hats. This machine will print sleeves, uh, it'll print neck labels, there's a lot of locations uh, that you can print when you're heat printing um, hats. Now moving along I want to show you sort of a wrap around print. So let's come back in close to the cap press and this is a really low profile almost bucket style um, hat as far as the top. I'm sure there's a full name for this. It's just not coming to me right now flip the sweatband out and let's get down to this really flat smooth pressing area. I have a print now that's longer than my platen. So something that's really cool with heat transfer vinyls, which this is, is I can break it up into multiple applications. So I'll position my print as best I can. I can see some of my prints hanging off the edge of the platen here. So I'm going to make sure it's straight first off. I'm going to heat press half of this down after I change it uh, to, to the 10 second application. Heat press half of this down and I'm going to rotate it um, and press it for 10 seconds on the part that's sort of hanging off the edge here. Heat press that on, just sort of move the hold down device. I'm going to rotate it up and get to that area. Lock the hold down device back down, making sure it's flat. And it doesn't matter if you heat or reheat other areas. I'm um, not seeing if, sure if you're seeing this, but this sort of tip of the platen is wanting to make contact with the bill of the hat on this side. So sometimes you don't want that to stay against the bill too long. You may have to pull the bill sort of down as you're printing it so it doesn't leave an indent mark on your bill. That's just another little thing to watch out for. So we've completed the print. In this case, we have sort of a wrap around print, and you could keep going across that hat. So the idea here is that extremely flexible, extremely easy to use, whether you want to print um, headwear like this, a visor, whatever you want to do, it's at all possible. Let's uh, keep going and let's print on this bill. I have a Surf's Up sort of raging waters for a beach shop here. I'm just going to position it on the bill at a location you can see it. Cover it with a cover sheet. If you're going to do a lot of bills, um, I've taken just a piece of cardboard and created sort of a jig that slides here and rests underneath the platen to hold the hat up so I don't have to support it with one hand. But if you're printing just one, you can support it with one hand while you lock down the other side of the machine. Alright, we have a good question while we're waiting for this to press and I'm going to peel it. Go ahead, Jimmy. So there are templates 
um, for the underbill on caps. Outside of that, pretty much any design you have that you want to size down works well for printing uh, any other location on the hat. Of course, you want to be careful um, the amount of detail you get into when you're going to have to weed it. So we get a pretty good close-up of that full color Raging Waters uh, word mark on the side of that hat. And then customization zones, I'm telling you, just the kind of stuff you can print here. And then, of course, to that point of designs specific for the headwear, you want to make sure that your design fits on the platen. Because I've been in a scenario before where I squeeze this sort of dimensions of that two and three quarters platen on the height too much, and it makes it extremely difficult uh, to line up and print. So making sure that your print is two and a half inches or less when you need to utilize that platen. So really what I wanted to do here today is, is not just uh, print some hats, but teach you how to identify your best ch chance for success when sourcing headwear. And so unstructured is better. We can print structured, shy away from acrylic, and then make sure your transfer is sized to print your particular hat. And I think just as we're talking and we're printing hats, I wanted you to see how quick and how easy it is to do this sort of thing. So let's move over to the close-up shot here. And you can see in very little time we've customized the bill and we've customized the front print and you can easily you know, rotate this hat around and print other areas. So, let me check my notes page. So, from the, uh, just to recap today and then I'll go over the specials one last time. Um, so if you just joined, this is a good way for you to get cliff notes in the summary, okay? When you talk about the anatomy of a hat, we want to do, uh, consider five or six panel. With heat printing, we can go directly over the seam on a six panel. However, five panel, if you have something that can't apply over the seam, is going to be an extremely flat pressing zone. There's no center seam on the hat when you talk about a five panel on the print area. Structured versus unstructured, very simple. Structured hat is going to be structured here, it's going to be firm, versus an unstructured hat is going to be very soft and not have that sort of fused uh, product to the backing of the crown of the hat. Unstructured hats are much easier to print. If you plan to do any prints that sort of go from the front of the hat to the bill area of the hat, that's something that's possible, you want to pick an unstructured hat. Uh, they're called dad hats and they're popular right now. They're back again, so take advantage of it, sell them. When you talk about fabric type, we want to lean towards cotton twill away from acrylic if at all possible. So source your cap styles in something that's printable, not that heat sensitive. Uh, bills are no problem. You'll be able to print a curved bill on your normal cap press. If you want to print a flat bill hat and not damage the flat bill, which is desired, you want to get a flat bill platen for your normal heat press or just sort of insert the bill into the side of your press and sort of work it around for printing. Many different styles of hats. Um, there's flex fit, fitted, snap back. These are just sort of uh, terminology that you want to become familiar with, familiar with as you start to sell and source hats. From the basics of a heat press, we have a dedicated cap press that needs to have interchangeable attachments to really print the wide variety of hats that are out there. It should have ad adjustable time and adjustable temperature like we have here on the Stalls Max Press. It's a bonus if you get a pressure readout in an auto open like you get on the Hotronics Auto Open Press. What to watch out for is scorching, increasing of the hat. These are the top two issues when printing headwear. Those are solved by using the right platen, by sourcing headwear that's printable, and by really picking a transfer that can apply at a low temp. You solve those three things, you'll be pre uh, printing professional quality hats without issue. And finally, just if you want to take advantage of the special, if you're watching live, we're offering a special where we can reach out to you. Just type that you're interested on the Max Press for $700, which is the normal price, but we're giving you a free platen. I'm strongly recommending this low profile that I used in most of the presentation, as well as free shipping. The Hotronics Auto Open, which gives you auto open and digital pressure, as well as a five-year warranty versus the one year, is available as well for $855. I'll stop now to take any last questions before we conclude our presentation. Okay, is it better to do the curve bill on the hat press or on the flat bill press if you have both? So Donna, if I have the, um, the 
hat press. I would rather do a curved bill on the hat press so I don't flatten out the bill when I'm printing it on a flat bill press. Um, can you print on top? I lost it. Can you print on top of the bill and up onto the cap itself? Yeah, and I don't have sort of a proper transfer anywhere nearby to show that today, but it's very easy um, with a heat transfer vinyl. You won't want to do this with a screen printed transfer to print from the bill up to the top. Um, so that's something that's easily executed. Basically what I would do is I would load, I would print the front first. Um, that's a little easier and you're going to have a crease in your heat transfer uh, film carrier. I would rotate that around, load it as tight as I can and print the bill. When you print the bill sort of is where you're going to do a little bit of the overprint onto the crown to make sure it gets heated uh, down into the seam. All right. And I think that will cover it today. If I didn't get to your question, I apologize. I'm going to jump on Facebook after this presentation, and we'll do our best to reach out to all of you interested. And I sincerely apologize for the technical difficulties at the beginning of class. Hopefully you stuck with us and learned a little bit about heat printing headwear.